Hey, welcome, Altogether New Life. So glad that you're joining me in this study together, this discipleship resource. That's our goal for this whole year is to grow as a disciple of Jesus. The commission that Jesus gave us before he ascended into heaven was not simply to make converts, but to go and make disciples. That is why the church is here. And so I'm delighted that many of you are sharing with me in this discipleship resource, Altogether New Life. Last week, we started this study together, and we looked at how this adventure with Christ begins. And as we study, I want you to be aware that a part of why we're doing this is so that we can not only get strong in our faith together, but also help others begin the adventure of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's the point. In fact, I want to pray that right now. Lord, thank you for every person that will be listening to this. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for the promise of your spirit. But most of all, thank you that you've set up your kingdom in such a way that we get to join you in seeing that others come to know your love and that others are filled with your Holy Spirit and that others grow into disciples. Lord, thank you that we get to join you in that task. We get to place somebody's hand into your hand. And so, Lord, I pray that today, even as we go through this study together, you will help us, Lord, and give us a burden for somebody that we could do this study with. Lord, help us to get our, um, man, our heart posture right. Help us to get a, a sense of what this material is. But most of all, give us visions about how we can share this with others. We're here studying all together new life. All together. Man, the kingdom is about community. It's not about individualism. And so we come together because even each of us should not look out for our own interests. Philippians 2. We should not look out for our own interests, but even the interests of others. The kingdom is about interdependence, and it is about community. And so, Lord, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would move in each of our hearts. And Lord, we'd open up our arms and uh, we'd embrace others and help them begin and continuing, continue in the adventure of following you. Uh, our study last week was chapter one, and we looked at uh, what it means to begin the adventure of following Jesus. If you don't have a workbook, you can download a free copy. There's a link uh, with this post. So download this copy of Altogether New Life and uh, join us in this, catch up with us, and let's grow in our discipleship together. So this week, we're looking at uh, chapter two, and it's titled Gather Your Resources. Now, I'm calling this an adventure because I know that's what it is. To follow Christ is an adventure. It's full of surprises. It's full of blessing. It's full of challenge. It's uh, sometimes dangerous. And so it's right to call this walk with Christ an adventure. I start this chapter with one of my favorite stories. It has to do with Fort Steele Campground in British Columbia. And this is a literal sign at the entrance of this campground in British Columbia. Due to the frequency of human bear encounters, the BC Fish and Wildlife, Wildlife Branch is advising hikers, hunters, fishermen, and any persons that use the out of doors in a recreational or work-related function to take extra precautions while in the field. We advise the outdoorsmen to wear little noisy bells on clothing so as to give advance warning to any bears that might be close by so you don't take them by surprise. We also advise anyone using the out of doors to carry pepper spray with him in case of an encounter with a bear. Outdoorsmen should also be on watch for fresh bear activity and be able to tell the difference between black bear feces and grizzly bear feces. Black bear feces is smaller and contains lots of berries and squirrel fur. 
grizzly bear feces has bells in it and smells like pepper. <laughs> that is good to know if you're going to be in the outdoors of British Columbia. Listen, here are some things that you need to know if you're going to continue in the adventure with Jesus, the adventure of following Jesus. Christianity comes with this promise. Listen to the word of the Lord, 1 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a life of godliness. His divine power has given us everything that we need for a life of godliness. I love that verse. It's parallel with what Paul tells us in Philippians 4.19, that he will supply all of our needs according to the full inheritance that has been given to his son Jesus. The full riches of Christ's inheritance. He's supplying all of our needs. So here's what I believe some of the key resources are that we need to gather, we need to have with us, we need to be ready to use like bells and pepper spray for black bears. And I don't know what for Grizzly. <laughs> Listen, the first resource, and we saw this in the introduction to Altogether New Life, the first and man key primary resource is the promised Holy Spirit. I love what I wrote in this chapter. I won't go through it. I want you to read it. But man, the idea of the Holy Spirit simply being a guest in our life is not enough. And you can read about that. Uh, I remember a, a, a mentor of mine, Dr. J.T. Siemens said, Jesus is not just resident, he's president. <laughs> and Jesus isn't looking to just be a guest in our life. He's looking for us to turn the title deed to our life over to him. Man, read about the primary importance of the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, you're born of the Holy Spirit, but there's more, and we're to keep reaching for more. According to Paul, we can be sealed by the Holy Spirit. That's the mark of a king, the seal of a king. He marks us as his. We can be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes, that is a later second work of grace. But there's third, fourth, thirtieth, three hundredths of a work of grace. Born of the Spirit, sealed by the Spirit, baptized by the Spirit, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And according to Paul, again in this letter to Ephesus, we are to be being filled. Continual action. That's what it means to, to walk the walk with Jesus. To continue in the adventure of discipleship. To be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, I hope you'll pay close attention to that section of this chapter. The second resource, equally important, prayer. Oh my goodness, this morning at the Network Center here in Quarryville, Pennsylvania, eight of us gathered for prayer, and we focused on the honor and the privilege of coming into the Holy of Holies. And man, we did not take that lightly this morning. It was serious business that we come into the presence of the Holy One, the one who in the Old Testament, they wouldn't even speak his name. And now because of Jesus, a way has been made into his presence. According to Paul, in, again in Ephesians, we can be seated with him at the right hand of God in the midst of prayer. This is not something to be taken lightly. This is a high and holy privilege. I'm so thankful for the six years that the Lord gave Tanya and I at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. It was there in that first year of, of, of struggle that I learned that I had preached about prayer. I'd taught about prayer, but I had prayed very little. And man, I committed myself as staff there to give at least 24 hours a week to intercessory prayer and worship. And I'm so thankful that I, that I got to work those muscles of prayer and worship together for those six years and, and then saw it. In, intrinsically tied to mission, prayer and mission intrinsically tied together. I hope you'll read this section on prayer. I hope you'll see this promise fulfilled in your life. Second Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. This is bigger than Google. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. That can only come in the midst of engaging with God in prayer. The third resource that I discuss in this chapter is the Bible, the Holy Word of God. Listen, read about this. 
but oh, how important it is to believe that this is an inspired book, inspire respiration, breath. God breathed it. Listen to the word of God. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We are to study, to show ourselves approved. There's no shortcut to knowing the storyline of God. And it will become crucial at the end of the age as we as witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ take the events of our time, cross-reference it with the storyline of God in his holy word, and we say, this is that. And we're able to keep hearts from growing cold, staying fervent in their faith for Jesus. That is our role as disciples. So man, the resources so far, Holy Spirit, prayer, Bible. But listen, God has not intended that any of us make it on our own. We are to have Christ-like friends surrounding us. The armor that God gives us in Ephesians, there's no armor covering our back. You know why? Because we do that in the church for each other. We cover each other's back. I make a reference to one of my favorite books by Larry Crabb, The Safest Place on Earth. It's a book about church, and that's his title, The Safest Place on Earth. Man, we are to show our vulnerabilities in the context of a community that's watching our back. That's what church should look like. And that's what draws people to Christ. We stick our neck out in vulnerability. We are honest about our weaknesses. And we're in a community that watches out for injustice and covers us. And that's what I'm longing for, more and more and more of that. And this is what my vision is for Altogether New Life, that not only do we have high celebration on Sundays, and we do that so well at Wesley Church, but that should just be the launching point for a week of interaction with Jesus and others. And I'm trusting that we experience the blessing of house church as well, where we sit in our living rooms around fireplaces. We worship together. We sit around kitchen tables or in office complexes, and we open the Bible together. And we appropriate the resources that are ours the living Holy Spirit right here, right now. Prayer, interaction with God, entering into the Holy of Holies. The word of God is authoritative and inspired. We've studied it and we've shown ourselves approved. And we have each other and we stand shoulder to shoulder with men and women who love Jesus. We've led some of them ourselves into faith. Oh man, can you imagine that kind of life? That's what Christ intends for every one of us. That's the life of a disciple. It's all together new life. Life in its fullness. That's what it means to be a disciple. That's what we're going for. So, man, this week as you read that chapter, here's the scripture that I want you to study. John 14 through 16, Ephesians 1 and 3, Psalm 19, 2 Timothy chapters 1 through 4. As you read those chapters, man, I want you to take time and, and write down the things that the Lord puts in your mind. Ask the Lord for bursts of creativity. If you've never stretched into the arts, go for poetry, draw a picture, do something. Let the Lord express truth in a variety of ways. And man, I won't read this to you now because I want you to read it. But I love this prayer that this chapter closes with by Brennan Manning in his book, the, Rag and the Ragamuffin Gospel. Oh, how I love that. That's such a great picture of Christ followers. So I wanna pray over you as you dive into chapter two, gather your resources. Lord, bless these women and men as we go through this discipleship study together. Bless them, Lord, pour your favor out on them. Lord, help them to grab a hold of the resources that you're so free to give all of our needs according to the great riches of Jesus Christ, you will meet. Thank you, Lord. Bless these women and men. In Jesus' name, amen.